On today's show, we got all sales and fries. We'll discuss whether Tobias Harris makes the Sixers Eastern Conference favorites and if the Clippers are a lock to land Kawhi. It's time to pretend we're LeBron and Giannis as we draft this year's All-Star team. And we debate who is most likely to steal the show on All-Star Saturday night in Charlotte. It's Wednesday, February 6th. The starter starts now. Good evening, sweet world, and welcome to The Starters, presented by Jack Daniels, Old Number 7 and Tennessee Honey. I'm Jay Skeets. I got rid of the eye patch. I apologize for my crazy red eye, but you're not tuning in to see my ugly mug anyway. Alongside me, as always, it's Tass Mellis. We got the Ozzy Lee Ellis, and over yonder, that's the bearded one. That's Trey Kirby. hey hey yo! Trey, what's up? Well, I'm here at the internet looking for your best tweets at hashtag the starters. And guys, the Bobby and Toby show is moving to a new network. That's right, last night the Clippers traded Boban Marjanovic and Tobias Harris to the 76ers. We'll get to the basketball side of things in a minute, but from a memes perspective, this is great news as the two best friends that anyone could have are now gonna be playing together on a third straight team. They're the preeminent bromance in the NBA, so that brings us to today's question. What's your favorite NBA bromance? And to me, the conversation starts with the guys who invented it for this generation. Steve Francis and Katino Mobley, who played together five seasons for the Rockets before both were traded to the Maverick, or the Magic. They put the bromance on the map, so I can't pick anybody else. But we want to hear from you, so let us know on Twitter, what's your favorite NBA bromance? Send us your best tweets, the hashtag the starters. We'll hear from you later. Somebody better say skeets and tests. Get <laughs> your tweets in. On tonight's show, we're going to discuss the Lakers' embarrassing loss last night. We'll get into the all-star Saturday night participants. And we're going to beat LeBron and Giannis to the punch and actually do our own all-star mock draft. That'll be a lot of fun. But we start with some true or false. Trade, 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 trade. It's coming left and right here already as we lead up to the deadline trade. Around 2.15 a.m. Eastern time, the Southern lawyer got a call. We got ourselves a trade! Tobias Harris, Boban Marjanovic, and Mike Scott are headed to the 76ers. The Clippers get back Landry Shamit, Wilson Chandler, Mike Muscala, first round picks in 2020 and 2021, second round picks in 21 and 23. That gives Philadelphia four all-star caliber players in their starting lineup. So guys, true or false, the Sixers are Eastern Conference favorites. Ooh. They have a fantastic starting five, but I can't call them the East favorites no? quite yet. Yeah, big four, Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, Jimmy Butler to go along with Tobias Harris. J.J. Raddick is their fifth best player. Sure, tons of talent, but it, it kind of reminds me of the Boston Celtics to start the year. The Boston Celtics had a great starting lineup, but they had 82 games to figure it out. Put that thing down, flip it, and reverse it. These this guys only <laughs> have 28 games to figure it out. Right. That's not a lot of games to, to figure it out. And then you're looking at if they get bounced in the second or third round, maybe Tobias Harris and Jimmy Butler are just rentals. And not to look that far ahead, but I think the cohesion and the depth of the other Eastern Conference favorites gives them just a little bit of an edge against the Sixers. Whether or not you know you think they're East favorites, do you like the risk that Elton Brand, the GM of the Sixers, has done here this season? You know, first off taking a flyer on Jimmy Butler, trading some rotation guys in Saric and Covington, and then doing this with Harris, trading some other rotation guys and a bunch of picks for Tobias. Do you like the risk and going all in and trying to make yourself, at least in the conversation, as maybe the best team in the East? You love if, it? If it's out there, why not go for it? And that's what Philadelphia has been building up to these last couple of years. When they went through the process and they stunk for so long, this is what they were kind of stockpiling assets for, and they cashed them in, a lot of them last night, to try to get Tobias, who's having a fantastic season. I mean, he's having an all-star season. Mm -hmm. And so now they feel that he was maybe the missing piece. And, and, and Tass sort of mentioned they don't have a lot of depth there, but that five is probably as good as any other five Five, is starting five in the league right now. I think there's every one of those players is a very, very good player. But they do have to mesh it together. I think one good thing, though, for Brett Brown is while they don't have a lot of depth, he's probably going to use two or three of these guys in that second unit throughout the game so that they're not all out on the floor at the same time because they can't all shoot and score. So that sort of spreads it out a little bit. But I think if you're a Sixers fan, you're pretty happy because they're not quite the Eastern Conference favourite. They've been good this season, not great. Tobias Harris, I think, certainly improves them. I'm, not, I'm still not sure they're the best team in the East. Wait till we see what happens. But mm -hmm. they certainly got better at 2.15 this morning. Yeah, I, I'm pumped as a guy who talks about basketball every day that you've got a team who keeps swinging for the fences. Yeah. They're trading all their assets for Tobias Harris. Could have been an all-star this season. But now he's their fourth best player. And, and to continue that comparison to the Celtics, Jason Tatum was their number one player last year in the playoffs. He struggled to find a role as a second or third guy. Tobias Harris goes from a number one option now to the third or fourth best shooter on the team or, or 
most prominent shooter on the team. Is he going to find his way? And I think as far as the depth goes, they'll figure it out. They'll get a buyout yeah. guy or something. There's, a, there's enough towel to go around, as you mentioned, throw some guys in the second unit. It, it's just a matter of gelling. 28 games isn't a lot True. in this league. Is this a, an insurance play here by the Sixers, though, if Jimmy Butler ultimately leaves in free agency and then they have a chance, of course, still to keep Harris and then have a big three with, you know, you're not losing Embiid and Simmons? Is, could you look at it like that? Because I'm a little worried. I'm interested, I guess, to see how Jimmy deals with this. His usage rate is, is going to go down even more now because he's got to get some shots for Tobias. Mm -hmm. A great three-point shooter stretches the floor. What impact does this have on Butler? I mean, it, I, we have to ask that because I mean, I be nasty. Yeah, I think it'll come down to if they're winning, he'll be okay with things. So? If they start losing and his shots are down right. and his usage is down, then he probably will start complaining because that's what Jimmy does. If he's not happy, he makes it known. But if the team is winning, they're having success, and everyone seems to be sort of sacrificing a few shots here and there, he'll probably be okay with it. But we've seen Jimmy in the past. He doesn't sort of wait too long. If things aren't going well, he'll, he'll certainly uh, speak up. The good thing about those big four, two of them, Tobias Harris and Ben Simmons, have shown that they're willing to let other guys shoot mm -hmm. and, and, and shoot at the end of, of games. The testy ones can be Joel Embiid and Jimmy Butler. Again, this is a... Uh... It's, it's, it's just a short test here. Right. you got a couple months to make this work. It'll be interesting to see. Next one, Trey. All right, let's take a look at that trade board again so you can be refreshed on what's going down because the Clippers cap sheet stays clean after this trade. Also restocks their war chest of picks and assets. We know that LA is jonesing for some Kawhi Leonard. So guys, true or false, Kawhi is going to the Clippers. Whoa. Who it wants to, be to false. say it? It has to be false now because Why is nobody that? knows what Kawhi is mm. going to do. Not even Kawhi mm. knows what he's going to do. But the Clippers <laughs> are positioning themselves yeah. to be in a very strong position to sign him outright, but also to use these other picks, particularly that unprotected pick from Miami. That's a great little asset to have that maybe they can use this to gain other guys through various transactions. Yeah. So the Clippers, it's a weird position because they were in the playoff hunt. And now they've weakened their position, but they have certainly looked to the future. For, for the second year in a row, yeah, after trading yeah. Blake Griffin in year prior. Because, look, everyone, you know, the Knicks have got cap space. The Clippers have got cap space. The Lakers are going to have it, maybe, depending on what happens there. Someone's going to miss out. And someone's right. going someone's to end up with a lot of cap space, but not players to fill it. But the Clippers obviously feel they're in a very strong position either way that they can use these these assets to, to get themselves a player or to sign, convince somebody to go and sign that. And maybe if they get one, maybe they get the second. But it's a big gamble still. It's a big gamble. So Well, I, I like what they've done. If you look at other teams, let's say in the past, where you have a guy like Tobias Harris, let's say a Rudy Gay in Memphis, you, you think, hmm, we got to sign this guy. We need him on our right. team. And you're going to be like the Clippers were most likely a 7-8 seed, you're not going to be a great team. This team is acting like a big market team. They, they feel like they should be a championship level team. And unlike the Knicks, they've got some really well-respected guys in their front office. <laughs> right. I mean, they, they Jerry do. West. Jerry West yeah. is the logo. Yeah. Yeah, everybody yeah. looks at that franchise and says, well, uh, that guy's there. He immediately just gave them respect w when he went there before this season. Steve Ballmer, Lawrence Franken there and Doc Rivers as your head coach. There's a big gap, I think, between them and the Knicks in terms of that. So they've got that going for them big time. And their outlook uh, is, is, is just different. Uh, and they set themselves up very well with the cap. I like the maneuver because they're, they're thinking big picture. Yeah, I like, the, I like this trade from both sides. I understand what both are doing. I think Doug Smith, the Raptors beat writer, uh, our fan of ours, a friend of ours, I should say, hopefully a fan. I think Doug is. Uh, he put it well. He said, look, this really impacted, this trade really did impact the Raptors because Philly, they're going all in on this season, you know, obviously competition against the Raps in the playoffs. And then the Clippers are going all in on the summer with their plans, as we've seen Steve Ballmer fly up to Toronto and watch Kawhi right there in person to try and get Leonard to L.A. That impacts the Raptors both this season and maybe into next and into the summer. So, I don't know, my gut, even as a Raptors fan, I think he is ultimately leaving. I think Kawhi is going to go to California and the Clippers even if look the to be out in the front. The finals? Maybe that's, yeah, that's mm. the wild card here. Uh, that, you know, they got to go very, very deep into the playoffs, which would probably be like a finals appearance mm. uh, to then try and keep Kawhi. Unless Masai's got something up his sleeve here before the deadline and gets another big name player, unlikely. I don't know, I think he might go. Because the clips are set up nicely, and like you said, they've got that Jerry West, and he just makes things happen. And they've set themselves up here, but we will see. Final one, Trey. Perhaps a surprise, the most active team of the past 24 hours is the Detroit Pistons. In one trade, they traded Reggie Bullock to the Lakers in exchange for Svi Mikhailuk and a second round pick. In another trade, Detroit shipped Stanley Johnson to Milwaukee in exchange for Thon Maker. That's two minor moves, so true or false, the Pistons have another trade to make. I joked on Twitter today that the Pistons 
future starting small forward was going to be Chandler Parsons. Hmm. It was just a joke because mm-hmm. they're getting rid of some wing guys here. I don't think that's going to happen. I actually think this is false. I don't think the Pistons have a big move to be made here as we reach the deadline, be it a Conley or a Gasol. This was made. They didn't want to sign Reggie Bullock long-term. He was coming up for a contract. They're trying to shed some money here because they are looking at their team going, wow, we have an expensive roster and we're not that good. <laughs> Even in the East, we're just not that good. we got to get a little smarter here. And I think instead of slapping Band-Aids on the bullet wound that is this team and they keep doing it over and over over the last couple of years, they're finally going to bleed out and regroup in 2021 so when think- Reggie Jackson maybe comes off their books and Galloway and John Lewis, just some of these bad contracts, guys not living up to what they're paid and sort of start a little more fresh. Do you think Blake's on the table at all then? <sighs> He's been rumored that, that maybe they're going to move him. Right. I, I guess. I mean, it's possible if they yeah. really want to just pull it down and rebuild. It's in play. No but I, really I don't think they're doing something. Otherwise, here really keeping him, though, really, is there? I mean, if they're, if they're looking to tear it down, then you may as well try to cash in on him while he's got some value. Possible. What do you, you know? think? I'm interested to see Thon Maker. He's going to get minutes, at, at the very least, as a stretch five. Hopefully, he makers the most of them. Mm. Let's hope so. Let's hope I'm not thong on this one. <laughs> when we return, who does LeBron pick first? We're going to find out when we select our all-star teams in our very own mock draft. Don't go anywhere. The Starters is presented by Jack Daniels Old Number 7 and Tennessee Honey. Thursday night on TNT, we got the all-star draft. Team LeBron, Team Giannis, those captains making their picks, and then some doubleheader action there. But why wait until then? Why don't we do our very own all-star mock draft? Okay. Lee and I mm-hmm. will be representing Team LeBron. How nice. do you feel about that? Yeah, pretty good. Feels good, all right. Yeah, and then, of course, Team Giannis over there, represented by our own Greek, Taz mm-hmm. Mellis and Trey <laughs> Kirby. So here we go. The, nice. only, the, only, thing we, the only thing we got to know about this, guys, is you got to draft from the starters first. All right. Then Giannis, you'll have the first pick when we draft from the reserves. And then finally, we'll have the first mm. pick when we get to the legends down there. Okay. All right. All right. So first, get her started. Team LeBron, first pick. I got a question for you, though. Yes. Are we drafting like an entertaining team? Are we trying to get in the head of LeBron and maybe mm. recruiting guys? Mm. What's our objective here? Uh, LeBron's had a, cu- a rough couple of weeks, so maybe he just wants to have some fun. Okay. So I think we should just have some fun. Let's go fun. Yeah, let's so, just get so, some. So where do you want to go first? Uh, give us Steph. Give us wow. Steph. Yeah, just don't yeah. Yeah, just go straight yeah. shooting. Yeah, I love Ooh. it. That's an all-star Ooh. game. Yep. I mean. Oh, it took the best player on the board. That does hurt, especially since Giannis said he wanted to draft Steph Curry right. first. What are we going to do? Yes. Our draft board oh, right. yes. um, We've got him. We've got him. Let's pretend he's Greg Odin and take Kevin Durant yeah, second. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Is that what you want? Uh, Durant? He's an MVP? I he can't. was the first pick last oh, year? Oh, Tess, what's Kyrie? I want, oh, I want Kyrie. Stir it up. Stir it up. I don't want LeBron to... To, be- to bury, the bury the hatchet. All right. I want a showman in Kyrie Irving. We cool All with right. that? This game is about showmanship. Okay. Uh, you know I love mm. entertainment. Uh, <laughs> I say we go, I mean, Kevin Durant, why don't we pair Durant with Curry? Yeah, and LeBron. Oh, man, that's great. Oh, that's a no brainer. Let's do it. All yeah. right, we're taking Durant. Yeah. Your team is hated already. <laughs> <laughs> Two Warriors. That's all right. Uh, that's all right. Yeah. All they do is win, Tess. Yeah. They're hated, but they nice. win. You got right. some villains. Who are we oh, going Trey, for? Trey, th- this one's all you, because I-, I took the last one. Do we do we want a hometown boy? Uh, I can't I can't go big in Joel. We can't go big early. <laughs> There's only one MVP left on the board. We gotta go James uh, Harden. Yeah. yeah, sure. Okay. I like this. Uh, we got a lot of dribbling on our team. Well, we wanted fun. Yeah. I think I think <laughs> we uh, off to a good start. I think the most fun guy left is the big man, Joel Embiid. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you don't fun. care about we don't care about defense. We don't need what? Kawhi he or could Paul be George. Defensive player Embiid, the, we gotta yeah. be a big yeah. guy. All right, I like yeah, it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. He actually he, tries too hard on defense. He'll be tweeting. I'm glad we He's going to tweet him. during the game. Exactly, It'll be hilarious. Exactly, exactly. Oh, this is a stacked that. team, Lily. Yeah. Oh, That's my a good team. goodness. But this is also a good team. We got to get a lockdown defender. They got guys that can do everything. We're going defense in the All Star game? Well, I mean, Paul George <laughs> and Kawhi Leonard are both very good defenders and very good offensive players. I'd rather have Paul George. Do it. Yeah, yes. I do. Do it. Paul George. We need, no offense, Kawhi, but it's all, right, all about Lee, the O. This is a tough one. Well, I because like, let's come on, let's be honest. Yeah. We want to win the game still. LeBron yeah. wants to win the game still. Yeah, of course. You could have Kawhi out there in the final couple of minutes yeah. to, to lock up somebody. But yeah. then Kemba's the hometown hero. You got to you got to show love to the hometown. LeBron's gonna try and feed him. Cool. Get him the MVP. Course. All right, yeah. we're going Kemba. We're giving you <laughs> yes! Kawhi. Yes. Yes. We'll That's try and make this a little it. more fair. Yeah. We badmouthed Kawhi. Perfect. <laughs> now we get it. Uh, Kemba's gonna win MVP. All right, Giannis, you guys get the first pick. First now reserve. This is reserves. nice. Oh. This is a nice option for this Giannis. Is a valuable pick here. Russell Westbrook treats the All-Star games like it's the finals. That's true, nice. but That's you know nice. LeBron's going to be wanting that Anthony Davis pick. Oh, 
Let's go, Anthony Davis. Lock him in. Let's get some drama. AD! Wow. Oh. Sorry! Oh. You take our stuff, we take right. your oh. AD! That's all right. He's going to be <laughs> traded to Call us Del Devs. Mm. Okay, Lili. Okay. Who, who are your top three guys? Give me your top three guys. Well, I guess Westbrook yep. is there. Yep. Uh, I mean, do we want Clay just to round out the Warriors there? Wow. Oh, that's true. <laughs> I think well, hey, Clay's going to be on the board. What about Nikola Jokic? He's going to be fun in this game. Ooh. I don't mind a big man. Oh, boy. Hey, Ben Simmons, Australia. I think we should go. Hold on. Let's get a guard right now. Westbrook or Lillard? I think we should go. Uh, We're going to get one of those guys. Well, let's get Westbrook. So then we do have Joel Embiid and Russell Westbrook on the same team. Oh, good team. point. That's a good point. Yeah, we want I know some... Giannis was the one who uh, said he wanted them smart. together. Yeah. But, uh, uh, I mean, this is we'll the leave thing. a little gap there. Yeah. All right, I like that. I kind of like Ben Simmons. Speed it up, man. Yeah, let's, let's get that Ben Simmons. We, we don't gotta push the oh, pace. What? A guy who doesn't shoot. That's, That's what I want. Aussie. That's right. We're getting all the Australians. <laughs> yeah. Smart. He took all right. Kyrie we and need Ben another Simmons. Big man. Let's get, you're, uh, you talked me into Jokic. Let's, let's do go, it. Jokic. Yeah, I love Jokic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going big. Great. How, what are we looking at? I feel like they're going to be going for Clay Thompson, so we got to get in while we can. <laughs> right. We need some shooting. Hottest player in the game. Yeah, That's now, right. now we're thinking. Heat check. Now we're I thinking. Think what do you got? Look, when it comes to all star game, Lillard likes to uh, yep. perform. Let's get Dame. Let's okay, get we're taking Dame. Yeah. We're taking Dame. Dame's off the board. Yeah. Beautiful. Welcome to Team LeBron, Dame. Welcome to you the might, winning team. You might play with LeBron in the future. Yeah. You mm. never know. We got some speedsters, Tassie. Let's add some bash. Okay. Blake Griffin. <laughs> yeah, Blake we need Griffin. some blast with our flash. Hey, All star games were made for Blake. <laughs> That's right. I know you're. No uh, your boy, your boy's yeah, still exactly. there. Yeah, I know. You Booker's not here, so let's get Bradley Beal. You want Bradley? You want yeah. your boy? I gotta have him out All there. Right, yeah. right. We're Good taking stuff. your boy, Bradley Beal. Yeah. Oh man, it's gonna be raining. Our <laughs> yeah. Woo! Oh my God, I'm loving our team. <laughs> How are we feeling here? There's some post-up threats left. <laughs> <laughs> you want some post-up threats? I uh, no, I kind of wanted to take Kyle Lowry because I think he might sit the game out. Let's do it. <laughs> More minutes for other More guys. For Keep, the other guys. Keep them warm. Keep them warm. Cool. Okay, yeah, we got a we got bunch the Raptors of Raptors duo. Carl Anthony Towns yeah. is still there. Yeah. I mean, I'm a big D'Angelo Russell fan. Same, same here. We got a, got a, quite a few uh, point guards though. You want to go Towns? Yeah, let's go Towns. Okay, we're going yeah. Towns. Yeah. We're taking Towns. Nice. Will they take nice. D'Angelo? D'Angelo Russell, Chris Middleton. Give me D'Angelo. Yeah. I like the fancy passing. Yeah, yeah. We got so much action in this <laughs> on this team. All right, look Lee, at that. What do we go? With, do we go with the shooter? Yeah. Or do we go with uh, one of the bigs? Uh, let's go Chris Middleton. He's had a great season. Really? Yeah. Oh, take whoever you want, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> he, yo, Giannis didn't take Chris Middleton. That's no. going to kill the Bucks. Exactly. exactly. We don't even have to talk about this one. We're going right, to we Nikola Vucevic. Oh, oh, Island, baby. We got Lamarcus. Yeah, I'm That's happy right. to take Lamarcus. All right. Down to Wade Ooh. or Dirk. It's our do we pick wanna, first. Do we want to mess with Trey and just take Wade? Or do we want yeah, the old Trey, man? Trey, do we Trey, want the other old man on the team? Uh, <laughs> I think we got to take He's younger than you, right, Wade? We got to take Wade. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry there, Trey. We're taking oh, your boy, Dwayne Wade. That's a good As point. our legend. You guys already got a 40-year-old. We'll take our 40-year-old. We'll 40 take our 40-year-old. <laughs> okay, there it is. Let's back up. Take a look at the teams, everybody. And uh, you let us know on Twitter. Hashtag the starters. Who's got the better team? Team LeBron. That's Skeets and Lee. Or Team Giannis, which is Tass and Trey. What do you think? Mm. I'm pretty happy with our squad. I'm really happy with yeah. our squad. Entertaining. I'm happy with our squad. I'm happy with our know. squad. <laughs> Can we make any trades? <laughs> you guys want to trade? Who do you want to trade? Although I know our, you guys want Anthony Davis, team. don't you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, when we come back, we'll talk about the Lakers' embarrassing loss and a whole lot more. Don't go anywhere. that wacky music. Let's play fill in the blank, Trey. All right, a weird couple of weeks for the Lakers got even weirder last night as LA was destroyed by the Pacers, losing by 42 in the worst loss of LeBron's career. The Indy faithful were heckling all night long. LeBron didn't want to sit by his team, and I think Mo Wagner's still waiting for a hand up. <laughs> Guys, fill in the blank. The most embarrassing part of the Lakers' loss was blank. Uh, the Ingram chance, as he was at the free throw line, the fans were just saying, LeBron's gonna trade you. And uh, that, I mean, that's rough. That's, that's got to be pretty hard for him. He knocked down both free throws, actually. Yeah. So, uh, he did pretty well, but, you know, it's out there now. And this is the problem with LeBron and the, and the Lakers basically saying they're giving up their entire team to get Anthony Davis. It's going to... These guys are going to hear about it. And uh, that was rough. And, and I think you saw it on the, on the game last night. They're affected by it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it wasn't just Ingram. Spread over to JaVale McGee, just, it, it didn't stop. But I thought what was more embarrassing was LeBron not sitting anywhere close to his teammates on the bench. That was LeBron doing that rather than the Pacers faithful. The Pacers faithful, hey, 
that's funny to me. But LeBron, yeah. I mean, you're asking for it by having three seats away from the rest of your guys. Maybe his throne couldn't get attached to those other seats, so he had <laughs> yeah, to sit on that one. Weird. I'm not sure, but uh, it reminded me of last year, the game before the trade deadline. He hit the game winner against the Wolves last year, and he kind of avoided Isaiah Thomas, right. who got dealt. So I'm not sure if he avoided <laughs> other guys on the bench you know who might be dealt, or unless dealt Demps doesn't want that trade <laughs> those, to happen. Those were definitely embarrassing. I'll go with the Mo Wagner and Lance situation, though, because this one was weird when you think about it. The Lakers in the first game of the season, they shared a video of LeBron telling his guys, anytime someone falls down, you stay down because a brother's going to come pick you up. Well, Mo Wagner mm. falls down. Lance and him, miscommunication, okay, it happens. Ball goes out of bounds, and ain't nobody coming to pick up Mo Wagner. In fact, he even mocks it as he sort of does like the he fake, I'll pick himself. myself yeah. up. So that, that's pretty, pretty mm. rough there. No one coming to get him up. And that's what LeBron had preached. And this whole, you know, AD trade scenario, maybe they get shipped, it has had an for effect sure. on them for no sure. Doubt. All right, next one, Trey. All Star Saturday night participants were announced last night. So let's take a peek. We're running back Tallies versus Smallies in the Skills Challenge. It's got a lot of starters' favorites in it. The Joker, the Donk, Ice Trey, Star Fox, and more. In the three-point contest, we've got two Currys, reigning champ Devin Booker, Old Man Dirk, and others. And in the dunk contest, Dennis Smith Jr. is back. He's joined by John Collins, Miles Bridges, and Hamadou Diallo. Got a bunch of choices, so guys, fill in the blank. Blank will steal the show on All-Star Saturday night. Dirk's going to do it. He's going to win the three-point shootout, I think. It's going to be his night. Is he going to be able to run from <laughs> rack to rack in enough time? Of course he is. Yeah, you know, as you get older, you become a better shooter. So he might not even finish all the balls, but he's going to knock oh, in most Oh, I see. Them, so. Wow, that yeah. would be, that would yeah. be cool. Yeah, so I, I think the old man's going to have one last uh, performance left in him. Last time he won... You were a young man in yeah. 2006. <laughs> that is a long time ago. Hopefully we see Dirk pull it off. Uh, I got no problem that there isn't a marquee name in the slam dunk contest. And, and to me, Miles Bridges is the one who's going to steal the show from all those guys. I got to keep going with this hometown, hometown boy. I feel like he can do it. Guys, guys, guys. The starters are going to steal Ooh. the show on All-Star Saturday night because... We're having our own show. Oh. We're gonna watch all those festivities. It's a watch party, and then we're following it with a drop podcast, a classic drop podcast, live. It's free. Go to the starters, ASW.com. Come join in the fun if you're in Charlotte. Back in a second. We had another trade today, and that was Tyler Johnson and Wayne Ellington heading to the Phoenix Suns in exchange for Ryan Anderson. Now, Wayne Ellington sounds like he's going to be waived, so he's going to be out there. That shooter is going to be out there for someone to go and pick up. That's the uh, sounds of it, at least. The Heat, this is a cost-saving move for them. What are the Suns doing? Yeah, it's interesting. I guess they believe in Tyler Johnson. Okay. You think they'd get an asset back? It's a little strange. Kind of Tonight, NBA trade deadline preview at 8 p.m. Eastern on NBA TV. Tomorrow, the trade deadline special will be involved in that. That starts at 1 p.m. Eastern. And then we've got our show recapping, hopefully, a busy Thursday at 5 p.m. All right, we asked you your favorite NBA bromance. You hit us up, hashtag the starters. What do you got, Trey? All bangers, skeets. LeBron and Dwayne Wade, a great bromance. Also great, Mike Conley and Mark Gasol. Also great. DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Lowry. Also great. Guy Fieri and Trey <laughs> Kirby. Also great. Skeets and Tess. Great answers, everyone. Good stuff. Uh, last night's pick'em results. Tess and I went with the Raps, mm -hmm. and they came through on the road in Philly. Lowry loves playing the 76ers. So that's another win for us. Tonight's game, it is the Rockets and Kings. Trey, the only one taking Houston on the road. Everybody else liking Sacktown at home. Lee, we haven't forgotten. Mm. You will be paying off your January pick'em loss on Friday show. Oh, as long as it's after the trade deadline, then. Yeah. That's good. I'm not being traded then. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, no. okay. No. You will not be traded. But we got something fun in store for okay. Friday show as you pay off that January loss. VSP time. Yes, we are going to Oklahoma City, but it's the Orlando Magic here with a beautiful netball play mm -hmm. from the Magic. Here, the ball just fizzes around, ends with Evan Fournier wide open for a. Swish bomb. Don't Google his name. That's what I call a very <laughs> solid play. Very solid indeed. All right, guys. Trade deadline tomorrow. Hey. It's going to be a blast. We'll see you at 1 p.m. Eastern for the trade deadline special on NBA TV, then 5 p.m. Eastern right here at this desk to recap hopefully some more trades. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, folks. And remember, games aren't played on magnetic whiteboards. Embrace the night, people. <laughs>